Hi everyone and welcome to Four Women, Four Decades Life Lesson Conversations. In this series we'll be talking to people around the world about the lessons they've learned that have helped them to see life and the challenges they face from a new perspective. And today I'm so excited to be talking to Manaz Bharti. Now Manaz is a leadership coach and runs a professional coaching programme in London which I was lucky enough to be part of last year and beginning of this year. She is passionate about people living an authentic and aligned life from the inside out with true presence. And I'm so delighted that she is joining me today to talk about, to talk about life and the current situation that we're all in and what she's kind of learned and, and seen a bit differently. So welcome Manaz. Thank you for joining us. So we, we were just kind of talking talking a bit before this about what, what this conversation might look like and we kind of don't have any expectations or plan for it but just kind of want to see where it goes. So Manaz, I wonder if you want to maybe kick off and we can, we can go from there. Sure. First of all, thank you, B. Thank you for asking me to do this. Um, Life lessons, eh? Had so many. Um, gosh, so many. I don't know where to start, but I think I think I think the place to start is is in the place of just being human. I think um, with everything that's going on in the world today, and it feels like it's getting crazier and crazier every day uh, I think I think it's worth remembering that we're all human and living a human experience and the context doesn't really matter I think it's um, whatever's going to impact us is going to impact us no matter what that is and different we all know about separate realities and, and how we're all living in our own little kind of created world of what is real, what seems real in the world right now. Um, and, and, that, and, and, and knowing that that passes and something else will happen, um, but not expecting something else to happen. I just, I really do think that one of my biggest life lessons is knowing that everything everything has a silver lining it doesn't matter what it is it's it's uh it doesn't feel like it at the time it really doesn't um and and even even the feeling whether it's good or bad it's not an issue it just is what it is in that moment and it's funny because I was speaking to a friend yesterday who's, uh, who's a musician um, and I don't know him that well to be honest he's he's I think he's from Belgium I don't even know that but he's a Facebook friend and uh, his mother passed away uh, from dementia it wasn't anything to do with Covid but because of Covid they had to um, cancel the whole care thing because they were too worried about the impact that would have on her um, and not being looked after in the way they would want her to be looked after but they kept her home and looked after her and uh, sadly you know she passed and um, and it was interesting because he he said he, when we would, he just rang me uh, I, I sent condolences and he called me and he spoke I met him before um, very very long time ago in passing and he called me and um, there was a piece of music that he created in memory of his, his mother. And it's just random musings almost like, you know, you, you would have random musings as a, in terms of speaking. He did it musically and I was listening to this piece that he did yesterday and I was like, wow. And his, he named his piece not knowing. And I was like, that's so profound. That was just so profound. And then we talked about 
about he, he didn't even have a name and he said oh I think it's not knowing because I didn't know what was going to come and I just did it and in and I was I had my mother on my mind and I said it just it was so beautiful I really wanted to thank you for doing that and can I use that piece of music as an intro to this new, new thing that I'm doing and he was really honored and really happy that I'd asked him and he said I wasn't expecting anything like this to happen I said no neither was I um and he said yeah of course you can you can use it um just reference me and I said of course I'll do that and and he said he said you know because the automatic reaction is you know your mother's passed away um condolences I'm really sorry and I hope you feel better soon <laughs> the normal response and his response to me saying that was, um, well, actually, I'm enjoying being in those sad moments. They're feeding me. I'm, joy I'm enjoying the moments that I feel connected and love. I'm going to cry. <laughs> yeah. And these ones. I wasn't expecting this to happen. But these, these aren't tears of sadness. It's love. They're just feeling it, the depth of it. It's a gift. It's a gift. And I don't think, I'm not afraid of it. I just, I just think how wonderful to be alive. How how wonderful is it to love? And that, that for me is, it's not, it's his words that, that made me realize that, actually I knew it already, but it was just beautiful to hear him say that. And look at what he's created, you know, I, I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you what he's created. But look at what he's created from that love and not knowing and that nothing, that space of nothing where there's no expectations and he just wanted to tinkle on his keyboard, on his piano. There comes this huge impact which not everybody hears because they're, because they're not there. Gosh, and what just that coming um, coming from that place of of love, and we were talking about this earlier, coming from that place of love and and no expectation, and just kind of kind of coming from coming from that place that's kind of deep inside of us, and just creating from there, wow. and seeing what happens. And how how amazing and having that having that trust and faith that whatever will happen will happen. Yeah. And that's okay. Exactly. And not attaching that expectation that that I'm gonna sell this many records or this the end product is gonna look like this. That actually Starting that piece of music from, as you say, from from nothing and not having a plan for that and just seeing what happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's when it has the authenticity comes out almost. Yeah. Yeah, you feel it. Mm. You can sense it, whether they're words or whether it's a painting mm. or it's a piece of music or it's, or even if it's a, 
I mean, this is the beautiful thing about coaching, isn't it? Is that you just show up and you create in the moment. You don't know what questions are going to come up. You haven't got a plan. Oh, you know, the worst types of coaches are the ones that want, want to make something better. You know, they want to fix it. You've got a problem. I'm going to make you fix it. I'm going to help you to fix it. Excuse me. <laughs> I hear you. This isn't about... This isn't about the lower levels of consciousness. This is not about, you know, fixing something. This isn't about... The scene, which is a big one. Because everybody wants to be seen. <laughs> but you get seen when you're not wanting to be seen. <laughs> That's the irony of it. Yeah. And actually, it's when you're not wanting to be seen that you have the biggest impact. And actually, it's, it's the not having the expectations and not having a structure where your mind is, this is how it has to look. This is how it has to be. This is how it has to, I need it to be this way. I need it to be perfect. I need it to be, um, I, I need it to be the way that my reality wants it to be. And, you know, there's outcomes, there's visions. I think they're very powerful incredibly powerful i think we do have the ability to create our world um and i i do think that it's powerful you know a lot of my life lessons have been through um you know i've i've gone from be working in investment banking and having a really high flying career traveling the world to then having a coach um, who I'm still connected with is incredible and full of shit at the same time. Um, <laughs> if he's watching this, he'll probably think, yes, yeah, so are you. And I am. But there's like this whole, um, you know, I've, I've gone from him waking me up almost like in that space to learning about a whole pile of things like NLP, the law of attraction, you know, master practitioner and consultant and trainer and all of that stuff, which is which has guided me to 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 where I am today, including the three principles and including you know Islamic teachings like from the Prophet and including Buddhist awareness and including you know, Hinduism and, and Christianity, like true faith, like true faith, which is what, what this is about, which comes with a territory of not knowing. And how many people are afraid of not knowing? I get caught up in that as well. I'm like, well, what happens next? And I have a conversation with my husband, you know, do you know? No. What are you doing then? Don't know. <laughs> but it feels right. It feels right. And actually that, that not knowing helps me not to be caught up in polarity with, with having to have a side. And, you know, I, I do want to have a side at times. I think it's important for me to do that because I do want to be real in this world. If I wasn't living life and I was sitting on a mountain, like my legs crossed and, you know, trying to find the answer, it it would be really boring and I wouldn't be being in life and playing the game, you know, because it, it is a game. I don't, not a game in terms of manipulating or, or wanting something in that way, not, not being worldly in this game, but being spiritually in this game and, you know, dancing between things and not worrying about what people think and just allowing things organically to unfold in, in the way that I think the world needs to. You know, one of the things which was the biggest learning for me 
in terms of my coaching career was that, you know, I kept fucking up on my exams and, and stuff like that. And I was like, really, am I supposed to be a coach? And then, and then I got to a point where, you know, I was accredited and all that stuff. And I got to a point where I actually, why, why am I wanting to be accredited? Why do I want to be seen with these letters after my name? Does it actually matter? Does it make me a better human being? Does it make me more authentically present if I'm carrying these words and these letters and these labels? Does it make me authentically present? Does it make me more confident? Probably, but egoically. And I, I, you know, I could be really happy about that because it would make me happy that I'm an MCC, a PCC, an ACC, and you know i'm not knocking it for some people it really works um but personally for me it was just it's a box that yeah and i was gonna say i remember on the on the coaching program that you saying something along the lines of will you feel more like a coach when you have that piece of paper in your hands And it's, and again, it's coming from, I mean, it's, it's a label. I could talk for hours about labels. Yeah. Again, if, if you're coming from that place of love and authenticity, then, then that's, that's all you could ever hope for. That's all I would ever want in a coach or a friend or a, whoever. But I wanted, I wanted to ask you just, on what you were saying about coming from that place of love and no expectation, what impact has that had for you? Like particularly now like you're doing, you're doing so much work with community, but it may be kind of more broadly what impact that has had for you and what, what difference you've seen. I think, I think, um, good question. Um, the impact has had for me, It feels like magic. You know, it's a really lovely space to be for me, not being afraid of the unknown and trusting and having faith and um, I have, it's not a numbers game, but I've connected with more people without, and as an authentic connection, it's not a, transactional connection if that makes sense and I think you know <laughs> this 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 might sound a bit trite but you know um just knowing that the field the field that we live in this this space that we swim in is filled with I'm gonna say it God's presence you know, that universal presence of something that we can't even comprehend. I mean, we think, people think they can, but they really can't. We can't. There's no way we can, because it's huge. It's huge. And actually, that, that for me, even like just knowing the tip of the iceberg that there's something there is, is, is the thing that, piques my curiosity and what I've realized over the years is is that you know a bit of that is in every single human being on this planet every animal every leaf every stone the inanimate objects the tables all of it is coming from our our eyes and we see we see all of creation through eyes that that a, a gift through presence that is the gift i mean when we talk about coaching training i think for me the the biggest thing about the training itself is how you just 
you become coach state. And coach state for me is presence, pure presence. That's pure coaching. It's the purest of presence. Now, oh well, yeah, you know, with with tools and things like that, we can we can work through different. We can work on the brain and you know the neurological level stuff, the the um, the programming of the brain, and you know, changing the patterns of the brain, the patterns of thinking, all of that stuff at that level. But as you grow, and I think everybody has their own path, as you grow to those levels, and it's, it's becoming more common that, that people are waking up to who they are, really are, you kind of get to this place where you feel grateful, incredibly, 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 deeply, deeply, deeply grateful for just being, you know, for just being alive. And so with that, with everything that comes through you, and I do think that we can be channels of good, of love. And, it, and when you're in this purest of purest of coach, coach state, you know, you will just do some incredible magic with the person that's in front of you. And you don't even know how it's happening. Maybe there's tools that help us, you know, there's, there's tools that have helped me to help people. But it's not the tool, it's where's it coming from? It's the intention behind it. Where's that intention coming from? What is the purest of intentions? Is it to control? Is it to become the savior? Because that's bullshit. Or is it to get them to find their answer? Because we're all living our own separate realities. And with that, we've got our own answers. And that those answers are, are what I want people to find in themselves, not out there. Because the answers aren't out there. They're just not. I had a conversation with my neighbor. Um, uh, they're, they're in their 80s. And uh, when, when Boris Johnson was in hospital, he was ill, um, you know, they, they uh, the lady said to me, she said, it's really bad that he's in hospital. I mean, what will, what will the country do without him? <clears throat> and it was really telling. But the dependency that we have on others, whether it's politics or whether it's family or whether it's friends or whether it's music or whatever, I don't know, just whatever it is that people become dependent on, whether it's addiction, you know, drugs, food, not food, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, <clears throat> makeup, clothes, uh, shoes, sugar, chocolate, have a chocolate. Um, it's so telling that, that when we become dependent, on others that we've lost the sense of self you know we know what to do you just trust that you'll know what to do you you already know what you're doing anyway you know what you're doing it already you're doing what's right for you that's enough that's enough and i get i get a sense that when people start leading their own lives authentically from that place of real, I mean, when I say the word channeling, you know, it feels a bit hippie-ish and kind of mystical and stuff like that. But I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about true, a true pull from within. That's like, this is what I feel like, really feel like doing right now and I'm going to do it, even if it feels scary or if it feels like the tiniest thing. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. I feel like that I, know, I really want to do this now. But it doesn't come from, I'm really angry. I want to do this now. It comes from, you know, stepping away from that. From that pain. Because, you know, if you spend long enough in anger or anxiety or, um, I mean, they're all useful emotions. They're just telling you something. 
if you spend too much time in those places it affects your body it does more harm to you than it does to whoever you're angry with so it's like yeah i'm, I'm feeling angry i'm really conscious of that can I, or what, you know what is it that i really really want to do not what i want to do it's like what do i really 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 want to do and to get that really 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 want to do answer step away from anger and then get some clarity have a vision you know allow that to come to you because it will when you give it space but if you're really angry and you want to be active you can do that too but it's short-term lived it's not it's not strategic it's not deep it's not the it's not the real juice that's waiting to flow from within you it's not that um, and 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 there's nothing wrong with being active either i mean if we didn't have real activism uh i don't think people would pay attention to what's going on in the world i think it's important that people do and that's their path which is fine but when you look at leaders like martin luther king or malcolm x or um uh, nelson mandela or especially with what's going on at the moment look at now nelson mandela was in prison for years he had a lot of time to think a lot of time to think and it's that thinking time and that thinking space that will help you to to find your guidance your individual guidance your guide to to take you to where you really need to be not not where you want to be right now but where you really 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 want to be which is, which may not even make sense. Even if it's just, even if it's just stay away from the news for a few days and see what comes. But actually just saying, well, asking yourself, well, what is it? What, what's my guided step? What's my real step here? What's the thing? that can really truly change the world rather than just saying well how can we make this better how can we fix this how can we how can we stop you know police brutality how can we just say fuck racism once and for all you know what is it that we can do to what can i do bring it back to the eye you know we is powerful and, and, I, and i'm conscious that everybody's on a hero's journey everybody you know that's one thing that was, it was a big a big thing for me to realize that there was a hero's journey but everybody's on their hero's journey but when, when the when the me becomes a we you get a whole different outcome a whole different outcome and you can transform not only your life but those around your around you who who don't who don't know what the light is who don't Feel like they're living in the light who don't who are scared of their emotions who are afraid to feel because that feeling is is just it's just a little compass saying you feel shit now there's the next thing that you're gonna do i'll give you an example of that actually which is a big one um so being muslim when when donald trump um well coming from the muslim faith when donald donald trump uh, said you know ban all muslims from coming to america I, I was livid i was really angry really angry and uh, i saw a five-year-old handcuffed at an airport and easter was five at the time and i was livid and um, i i used to go to the states for trainings and stuff and i've got some incredible friends there it's a absolutely stunning country it really is beautiful you know fuck you if you're going to stop me doing what i want to be honest at one level but i was so angry and livid i made a decision that i wasn't going to travel to the states until somebody else came to power somebody is you know somebody who makes sense and this has impacted my family in terms of traveling there for work and things like that so but in that moment, I was really angry. I was so angry. And I was conscious of the anger, took an to nursery and then um, ended up 
because it was pouring with rain. I needed to buy a new pair of boots because I had I had holes in my boots, and I was like, I've got to go into town and get a really waterproof pair of footwear so that I'm dry. And uh, as I was going in on the underground, um, there was a busker at Euston Station, and uh, I was livid, angry, and he was playing "That's Not the Shape of My Heart" by Sting. That was it. Started crying, <laughs> which I do often, by the way. And my state completely changed. I went from complete rage. I was, I was really angry to this sadness, intense sadness that, you know, how is the world the way it is? What is, what is this? It just doesn't make sense. So I cried. Didn't care who was on the train. People were looking at me. I didn't give a shit. I was just crying. Went to the shoe shop. Cried in the shoe shop. Bought a pair of shoes, boots. There, there were no one asked me any questions. <laughs> they were just I just carried on crying. Came out. I felt better for having done that. And then I spoke to a few friends, and and I was like, I don't know. I I've got to do something. I don't know what that thing is. I've got to do something. And, and all I want to do is just get people to connect, just, just to know each other without the labels, you know? So I want, I, want, I want Muslims, because this is the ban, to know people that aren't Muslim, and I want non-Muslims to know Muslims. And I was like, this, is, this has got to happen. Because all of my friends that are from different communities, they're just amazing, you know, I love them all. And I see the humanness in them. So I, I, I spoke with this, it is a really lovely, lovely lady who's a coach in our area and then um, Nat, we met for a cup of tea in William Morris's gallery, who is all about community, was all about community, incredible man. And it's a beautiful, beautiful space. And we sat there and I said to her, I said, I said, I don't know what I want to do. I need, can we just talk? And she said, yeah. So I said, I don't know what it is that I want to do. And then she started exploring, because she's a coach. And, and, and I said, I just, I just want people to meet. I, I, I just want people to get to know each other. So that any time the media or government or politics label people as the other, they know that that's not the truth. They know that they know somebody who's not like that, and that's not the truth. And she said, okay, so it's a place for people to come together. I said, yeah. So she said, so it's a place for them to discover something new. And I said, yeah. It's the discovery space for people to discover someone new or something new about their community or whatever. I don't care what they discover. So she said, okay, so when do you want to do this? And I said, next week. She said, okay, where do you want to do it? I said, around my dining room table. She said, okay, how about you bring three people and I bring three people? I said, okay, let's do that. And that's how it began. So I just put paper on the table with pens and I invited my, nine, my now 92 year old neighbor who doesn't go out and he was so grateful to, to have company and he said, um, he said, I never, I go three weeks without human contact sometimes and for him just to have a cup of tea and sit around our table, he was just really happy and sharing his stories. So I said two hours, we're going to sit here and we're going to talk about whatever. And so people talked and they doodled and they drew and they wrote. And after two hours, I said, time's up. Nobody wanted to leave. And there was no agenda and there was no judgment and there was no, there was no outcome. It was just a group of people getting to know each other and meeting. They were sharing advice, knowledge, not coach related. They were just talking. And connecting and for me that was that was an example of creating something from which I had no idea what would come and one of the things that has come from the coaching training is um, a number of coaches who heard about the discovery space because I do feel like it, it needs to be facilitated with somebody who has coach state and then a coach presence and can ask questions and explore the depth of what's coming out of people's mouths by going deeper. And so um, 
we've had a couple in Sri Lanka, we've had one in Qatar recently, we've got the second one just happened in Romania, we've got young people program that has just evolved from nothing, not knowing what was going to happen. I mean, I'm really passionate about young people stepping up and being leaders, not, not angry, not angry protesters and activists, but really deep leaders that are going to change and transform the world that we live in. So that is something that I spoke to you about earlier, because I think you'd be brilliant in that space as well, because generationally you're closer to them than, than I am. I can hold the space for you to hold the space for that to happen. <laughs> Um, but there is this, this huge shift, I think, that is, hap is happening and is about to happen. And that shift doesn't come from trying. It comes from the unfolding and the doing and not knowing what's going to come next. And maybe I'm an extreme example of that, but it's the way forward. Um, and I don't know from one minute to the next whether the discovery space will carry on. You know, it's had no, well, very little funding and it's not, it's not about the funding, but it's, you know, do the coaches want to carry on doing it? And their answer is yes. And we've got one for, we've got three, we've got two for young people. We've got um, one for life after cancer. We've got, for people who've had cancer, they're just a support group and for them to, to attend free workshops to continue living a life that they want to live. And, and then the rest are just open for people to just come and have a chat and a cup of tea when the doors were open. But it is about, and it's really interesting, the conversations around fear. I can see them. I can, I can hear it. And then by the end of the conversation, it's gone and I don't know how that happens that's magic it's like magic or the power of spirit true presence true coach state whatever you want to call it it's it's that um it's that that's the only thing that can transform the world it's not let's make this happen or let's let's do this thing because it, it's it's just like conscious mind thinking is short term i don't see i don't see it as i don't think see it's a more permanent solution for the bigger problems and the deeper problems that we've got in the world and and you know the other thing i do want to say is that it's not easy it's not easy because we we do get in the way ourselves And there is an education, but it's, it's the balance, you know, all humans are important. But when some, a group of humans are having a repetitive thing happening again and again and again, and, and it's systematic, then where's the answer for that systematic issue? It's not top down, it's bottom up. It's from every individual that is contributing to that, whatever that is. It's finding a solution and collaborating and making it, making the world a different place because the competition is taught. The competition comes when it's about funding and money and ego. That does, that's not where the answer, the answer lies. And people see through it. You can see through it. You can see right, right through it. Spirit is where the magic is. Wow, so much, so much rich stuff there. 24 hours. <laughs> no, we're running out of time, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, gosh, I mean, understanding everything that you've, you've just said has been, been huge for me and huge for everyone else who has also seen that. And I think also right now in the situation that we're in with, with lockdown, it's, it's also that connection that yeah. we all need we all really really need whether we realize it or not but but thank you so much for for sharing all of that and 
I hope everyone who's been watching has been enjoying this as much as I have. As I, as I said, I could just listen to you and talk to you for hours. But but thank you, thank you so much for, for being part of this conversation. And for those okay. watching, for those watching, we've got lots more of these videos on our YouTube channel. So please do check them out and please subscribe. This has been part of our Four Women, Four Decades Life Lesson conversation series. And we're so excited to be, be doing this and having more conversations um, with people and having these yeah rich rich discussions so thank you manaz and it's been a pleasure thank you for asking me i don't normally do this sort of stuff so but you're special <laughs> <laughs> right, <can't> you? <laughs> thank you lovely thank you so much everyone for watching and we'll see you again soon <laughs>